Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzmong TV here, aka Lauren33. I'm back here today with another video on the channel for you guys. And today, we got another episode of the Legit Shoe Podcast here. We're going to be talking a little bit NBA today. We're reacting to the blockbuster news of Star Guard, future Hall of Famer, Damian Lillard. The saga of Damian Lillard being traded is finally over, and he's not going to Miami. He's not going to Philadelphia. He's not even going to Boston. He's going to Milwaukee. Yes, he is joining the Milwaukee Bucks. He's joining Giannis Antetokounmpo in a shocking move. Easily the craziest deal of the summer. And we're going to be breaking it all down, discussing. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. Um, I'm going to talk about it from each angle. I'm going to talk about it from Damian Lewis angle. We're going to talk about it from the Bucks angle and Giannis. We're going to talk about it from uh, Portland's angle and what they got in return. We're going to talk about it from Phoenix's angle because this was a three-team trade between the Bucks. Um, the Suns and the Trailblazers. We're also going to talk about it from the other contenders in the East, like Philadelphia and the Celtics, and how they should be reacting to this trade. And we're going to talk about how this affects the overall NBA. Um, we're getting ready for the NBA season in just a little bit over a month. We start right around Halloween. Media day is next week. Training camp will be opening up as well, and you know things will be picking up as we get ready for another amazing NBA season. And Easily, with training camp just about to begin, we get this deal just about a week before. And we expected Damian Lillard to get traded eventually. We knew Portland wanted to uh, get this done before training camp. You know, you don't want to be bringing in all those new players um, that they got. Scoot Henderson and the young guards and still have the Damian Lillard there. It just wouldn't make sense for him to even report to training camp if he knows that he's not going to be on the team uh, moving forward. And it would just cause a distraction. Not because Damian Lillard is a distraction. He's not a distraction at all. But, you know, um, they wanted to take care of the situation and then move on. Um, you know, move on to the next generation. Start building up these new guards. Um, and then let Damian go start the season fresh with his new team as he finally goes to chase over an NBA ring. So, we're going to start off talking about Damian Lillard, right? This is something that... Um, I've wanted Damian Lillard to do. Uh, for those who don't know, Damian Lillard is one of my favorite players in the league. Uh, Steph Curry is my number one, and Damian Lillard would probably be right there as my number two. I love Damian Lillard. For years, I've wanted, like, I'll be honest, it was a couple years ago, I tried to argue that Damian Lillard was better than Luka Doncic. Uh, and, you know, now I don't believe that, of course. Um, but that's how high I, I, I was, and I still am on Damian Lillard. I love the guy. You know, I just feel like all these years he spent playing in Portland, you know, he could have been anywhere else. He could have been in Miami or New York or Boston, one of these big markets, you know, um, playing for uh, a title. You know, Dame did everything he could in uh, Portland, everything he could. You know, he was the definition of loyal. You know, now that Damien's gone from Portland, you know, now the most loyal player in the NBA is technically Steph Curry. Um, he's now been with his team the longest. I believe, what, this is just 14 or 15 year in the NBA. Um, and he's been there in Golden State since he was drafted. But before that, it was Damon Lord. Um, and um, Dame had done everything. You know, he signed two max deals. Remember, Dame's on his second max deal uh, that he signed with Portland that he still has four years left on, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But... Dame signed two max deals with the organization, showing that loyalty. When in his prime, Dame's near the end of his prime. He's not out of his prime yet, but he's near the end of his prime as he is now in his mid-30s. Um, but he spent his prime years, you know, trying to do all he can to make Portland a contender. And they had some good teams. You know, back in the day when they had um, Nurkic and C.J. McCollum, right? Um, they had Gary Trent Jr., um, they had some good runs, you know, from, we all remember how Dame, there's so many moments of Dame putting that team on his back, you know, the moments in the bubble uh, during early, you know, back in the COVID days, right? We remember um, those great performances, the, what was it, the, the 56 points against Denver um, in the playoffs, where literally that fourth quarter in overtime were all him hitting those crazy threes, right? The game winner um, against the Houston Rockets uh, back, I believe it was... I think it was his rookie season, but back at the beginning of his career, remember when Portland had just won their first 
um, playoff series in well over a decade since the days of Clyde Drexler. And then um, we all know the one of the best game winners in NBA history, the one against uh, OKC um, a couple years later uh, when he uh, he waves goodbye. He, he decides to take a step back um, or a sidestep 40-footer over Paul George sending home PG, Westbrook, uh, and the OKC Thunder. One of the, and we all know the, the waving goodbye, right? There's so many great Damian Lillard moments. All of his game winners, his buzzer beaters, the Dame times, right? Damian, you know, some will try to argue that Damian Lillard is the greatest player in the history of the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, there is a conversation there, but I would probably give a slight edge to Clyde Drexler and what he did. Um, remember, Clyde brought the Portland Trailblazers to an NBA Finals, I believe what was in 1992, I believe, against uh, Jordan and... Uh, the Bulls back when we all remember the famous shrug game. And, but, you know, you can't, you, you know, you can't uh, argue the legacy Dame has. You know, he is one of the greatest trailblazers of all time. You know, I think, one, you know, when he does retire years from now, um, he'll have uh, his jersey retired there, maybe even a statue. I don't know. Um, but, you know, you can't question at all. Um, Dame's loyalty to that organization. You know, I know a lot of Portland Trailblazers fans, you know, are going to miss him. I, but remember, he, you know, I think if you're a real uh, Trailblazers fan and a real fan of Damian Lord, you knew why he had to do this. You know, he, Dame gave Portland chance after chance after chance to um, build a roster that was contending for a title. Dame, Dame wanted to stay there. You know, for years, Dame said, I'm loyal, I'm loyal, I'm loyal, to the point where Dame, he spent most of his prime losing in Portland. You know, he kept giving them chance after chance after chance to say, hey, um, build a roster that's worthy of us contending of a finals uh, of a finals team, and I'll stay here my whole career. Dame has been saying, like, I don't need rings, or, I, I, you know, like, if I retire without a ring, I'll be okay. Even though he, I, we all know he wants to win one, but... You know, but it came down to it where, you know, Dame finally realized, like, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to invest in building a finals-worthy team. And plus, it is a little difficult. As great as Dame is, there's a lot of stars that don't want to go to Portland, Oregon. You know, it's in the Midwest. It's cold, right? Uh, it's ironic saying that he's going to Milwaukee, but he'll have Giannis over there, you know, arguably the best player in the world, you know, but... Uh, Portland was just never ever going to get that finals roster um, for Dame. You know, so eventually after, what, 13, 14 years, he finally decided, all right, I got to go. I have to go. You know, uh, I'm in my mid-30s. And, you know, my pr I'm nearing the end of my prime. You know, this is the time. If I'm going to go compete for a title, this is the time. And we all agree, right? When we look at the best shooters in the NBA, you look at Steph Curry, you know, Damian Lillard, I would say, is second right there. The, you know, maybe you could argue Clay Thompson, but we all know when it comes to the best shooters, Steph Curry, Trey Young, Damian Lillard, right? Right there. And, you know, you know, Dame can shoot it from 40. From 40. He can shoot it casually from the half-court line, just like Steph. We know how great Damian Lillard is. Last year, he had arguably his best league, his best... uh. Uh, his best season, he played, I think, what, was it 58 games? He missed 24, right? Um, but he was averaging, like, 32 points, um, four and a half rebounds, seven assists, right? He was shooting 46%, right? He had pretty much his best season in the league. Um, and at 33, 30, I forget how old Damon is. I believe he's, like, 33 years old, you know? So, you know, clearly he's not out of his prime. And... I'm I'm very happy that he made this uh, this move and he finally stuck up for himself. Like, hey, I want to compete for a championship, right? You know, uh, I'm starting to enter the second, the backhand of my career, right? And the thing about it is, Dame is gonna age gracefully, just like Steph Curry, right? Steph's turning 35. Excuse me, Steph's turning 35. Dame's 33. He'll be turning 34, right? They they don't necessarily attack the the rim at all the time. They're great finishers. We know they can finish. But that's not the main staple of their game, right? So, um, they as they age, they're never you don't lose shooting ability. You may lose athleticism, but you don't lose shooting ability. So, you know, Dame and knowing that, right, 
entering, you know, the second half of his career, now he's finally like, all right, I really want to win, you know, and I, I can't do that in Portland, so I'm going to request a trade, you know. Um, in terms of Damian Lillard himself, right, we know he wanted to go to Miami, right? He made that clear from the jump. And I think that was part of the reason why this trade got delayed so long. You know, part of it was, of course, Miami couldn't come up with deal. And we'll talk about Miami in a little bit. But um, Dame, part of the reason why this deal didn't, you know, get done sooner, is this has been basically three months, pretty much since early July, end of June, right, when the NBA season ended. The reason why this deal has not gotten done is because... You know, Dame was so kind of like, I only want to go to Miami, which makes it insanely difficult, right? You know, you have teams like Philadelphia and Boston, you know, Toronto. All these teams want Dame. It's not often that a superstar of Damian Lewis' caliber is available on the trade market, you know? So everybody wants to get this guy who instantly turns your team into a finals contender, one of the best point guards in the world, one of the probably top 15 players in the world. An absolute superstar. And, but basically he just said, you know, he said, I, I he, he said, uh, I'm not going to, he didn't flat out say, I, I'm not going to play if I get traded to any of these other destinations. But it was kind of what he was saying. You know, his agent was putting out there like, oh, you're getting an unhappy star, boss. And if you trade for him, Philadelphia, you're getting an unhappy star because he wants to go to Miami. Right. And you know what's funny about this is, like, people did put it out there that, you know, Dame and Giannis would be such a great combo, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, Milwaukee never was, you know, never was kind of, they were under the radar this whole time. The teams we kept talking about were Philly, Boston, New York, right? There's even some reports about the Lakers, you know, Miami. You know, Milwaukee was under a float. Toronto came in here just the last couple of days, and we thought they were going to be the favorites. But they didn't want to go. Uh, they didn't want to give up uh, OG and Obi. You know, so Milwaukee stayed afloat this whole time before coming in hot these last couple of days and stealing Dame out of nowhere. You know, and I was annoyed because I was like, Dame, you want to get out of Portland, and I understand Miami's your preferred destination, but anytime a player you know, requests as a trade, usually you have three or four destinations that you want to go to, right? You know, like Kyrie Irving. Um, he wanted, he had Dallas on his list. He had the Lakers on his list. He had Phoenix on his list when he was getting trade out of Denver, right? KD had, you know, um, what was on KD's list? Phoenix, Miami, um, and there was like uh, two other teams. You know, yes, you have your top destination, the one you want to go to the most, and, you know, I think Dame earned, of course, Dame, the loyalty that Dame had towards Portland, he had definitely earned, you know, the the right to um, choose where he wanted to go. But at the end of the day, Portland has to do what's best for them. They paid this guy, what, over $400 million had Dame has made in his career so far? So when they paid you that much over this time span, they got to do what's best for them. They don't owe you the trade the trade you that wherever you go, that's not the way business works. They can at least try their best to make you happy on your way out if it works best for them. But at the end of the day, the interests of the team have to come before the interests of the player. So that's why I was a little bit annoyed because Dame, you know, kept saying just Miami, just Miami, just Miami. We heard a little bit of like San Antonio, you know, and some of, you know, him teaming with Wembyama and all this other stuff. Right. But, it was mainly just Miami, and I was like, Dame, you need to go somewhere where you're going to win a ring or you're going to have the best chance to win a ring. And, you know, if the uh, in the off case that Miami can't offer, you know, you anything or not enough to get this deal done, right, you need to have two, three other teams on your list that will help, right? And when he was saying no to Boston Philly, I was like, first off, you come to these teams, you're you're going to be the favorite to come out of your conference and win the title, and isn't that the go at the end of the day? Like, I understand, yes, you want to go to Miami for all these reasons. Being in Miami, playing with Jimmy Butler, playing with Eric Sposa, all these things. But isn't the go at the end of the day that no matter where you're traded, you're, you're going there because you want to win a championship? Isn't that your ultimate goal? So, why, so even, you know, yes, you want to go to Miami, but in the case that you don't make it there, right, you should just be happy that you're going to end up with a contender. 
You know, and yet all this like, oh yeah, you're getting an unhappy star. Sure, yeah, but this is like we all, I, I, we, I think we all know Dame's the type of person that he's just he's not gonna not show up. It wasn't like oh you, you Dame got and traded to Boston or Philly, right? He was just not gonna show up. He's gonna show up. He's gonna you know play his heart out. And he's gonna try to win that title. Simple as that. You know so. That's what the part of the reason why I was getting so annoyed, and this is part of the reason why this deal took so long to get done, because Dame um tried to make it clear that he wanted to go to Miami, and he didn't end up there, you know. So when you look at it from a little from Dame's perspective, sure, do you feel a little bit for him that he didn't get to end up in the destination he wanted? Yeah, I feel a little bit for him, you know, because you know after showing all that loyalty, you don't end up. In you know, at least your number one destination. But the fact is Miami was not able to get it done. Miami had three months. Three months to get this done. And we'll get to Miami in a sec. But they had three months to get a trade. And they failed. They decided to, you know, we heard all the reports. And, you know, so and I'll save my Miami rant for a little bit later. Because I, I do got a little bit to rant on Miami. Um, but, yeah. You know. Uh. So Dame, you know, he's not going to Miami, but at least you're going to a contender. You're going to where most people are going to have you fit the, as the favorites to come out of the East. Most people are not going to have you as the favorites to win the NBA title. I feel like more than that, Dame should be ha- just happy with that more than anything, right? So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Let's get to Dame and go into the Bucks specifically, okay? So let's talk about this from now the perspective of the Milwaukee Bucks, right? So first off, I got to give kudos to Giannis. I feel like Giannis had a huge role in this because we, if you guys have heard the last couple weeks, Giannis made some comment on podcasts is saying, you know, I felt like some people are not all in in the organization, right? And I'm not resigning unless I feel like, you know, everyone's all in on the goal to win a championship. Um, you know, I'm sacrificing all this time away um, from my my family, my people, right? And, you know, I need to know people are willing to make the same sacrifices as me. Basically calling out the organization. And... It's not like Milwaukee hasn't already done everything, you know, that Giannis has asked, right? You know, because remember, you know, when they brought in Drew Holiday a couple of years ago, they don't win that championship without Drew Holiday, who ironically got traded today, right? You know, and remember, do you know what's crazy is Drew Holiday put out a thing a couple weeks ago um, saying um, he's a buck for life, right? I want to retire as a buck. And then <laughs> he gets traded today. You know, um, which is kind of funny when you look at it, but um, you, you know, it wasn't like the Bucks were not listening to Giannis. You know, the Bucks have been in contention every single year for you know the last half decade. You know, they've been there and they've been in the conference finals. They've been to the semifinals. They've won, been to the finals and won. You know, they just let go of cuts uh, Budaheiser. Even though, you know, I feel like it was a little bit unfair, to be honest, because Giannis was injured part of that first round against Miami last year and a couple other things. You know, Chris Middleton wasn't healthy as well, but, you know, they decided to to fire Bud, which I disagree with, but it is what it is, right? And, you know, I I don't think Giannis had the call of Milwaukee, but I think he just wanted to make it known, like, you know, I want to be here. You know, I don't have any intention to leave. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about winning a championship, right? And now with this, I, I don't think, you know, um, anything else needs to be said. I do think Giannis could still leave Milwaukee. You know, this is what I think is going to happen. I think, you know, sometime in the next three or four years, because now Damon's there, you got to remember, Dame still has four years left on his deal, right? Um, so Dame's not going anywhere. Um, I think sometime in the three, four years, I'm confident saying that the Bucks will win another championship, you know, and I'm saying this as a Celtics fan too, and I'll get to the Celtics a little bit later, but sometime in the next three, four years, the Bucks are going to win another championship in my opinion. Um, how old is Giannis right now? 
Yeah, Giannis is only 28. But this is crazy to think about. Yeah, Giannis is only 28. And I think most would already say he's a top 30 player of all time. Two-time MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Finals MVP, Finals Champion, right? Generational talent. Um, Giannis is all, you know, when you look at... uh. Giannis is only 28 years old. He's in the, you know, he's he's just really in the middle of his prime. You know, of course, you, you got to be careful with big men because big men do age a little bit uh, quicker because of injuries and the impact on the knees and the legs, right? But, you know, Giannis isn't slowing down, looks like, anytime soon. Um, I th- What I think will most likely happen is I think Giannis, I think Giannis is not up for free agency for a couple, I think it's like two more years if I'm right. You know, correct me in the comment section, but I think Giannis has two more years left on his current deal. Uh, what I think what will happen now is the organization has clearly made a commitment to Giannis. Like, we will do whatever it takes to keep you here and show you that we are focused on winning another championship. And I think Giannis will most likely re-sign an extension, at least for a couple more years. It may not be like a long-term five-year deal, but maybe it ends up being something like three, four-year uh, deal, right? I think him and Dame will be together for at least the next three, four seasons. I think they'll probably win a ring, uh, at least one championship during that time. Who knows? Maybe multiple, but who knows what will happen. Um, And then I think after that, I think Giannis could still leave, you know, sometime in his early to mid thirties. And, you know, maybe he could choose to go elsewhere. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he stays with Milwaukee forever, but that's what I think is going to happen. I think Giannis is going to play with Dame for the next couple of years. They're going to have, you know, be in contention every year. And, you know, I think it would be an absolute disappointment if they don't win at least one championship, maybe multiple. Um, and then um, uh, move on from there. And maybe a couple of years from now, after they've won, maybe, you know, Giannis decides he wants to go play somewhere else. Or, you know, uh, but I definitely think the trade itself. Uh, and we haven't even really gotten into the full trade. I haven't even said, but you guys probably already know the trade itself was, of course, the Bucks got Damon Lillard, the Blazers got Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, um, Tumani Kamara. They got the Bucks 2029 first round pick, which is unprotected, and they get pick swaps on the Bucks 2028 and 2030 pick. So these are picks that the Bucks won't be using for or the Blazers won't be using for five, six, seven years. So who knows? They might deal these, you know, these picks later on um, if they choose. that. But these are picks, yeah, that they won't be using for half a decade here, God willing. And then the Suns will be getting Yusuf Nurkic, Grayson Allen, Nasir Little, and Keon Johnson. So, um, so basically from a basketball standpoint, right, First things first, when you look at the the duel of Damian Lillard and Giannis, uh, I've I've had a conversation with my friends about this. When you think of Damian Lillard, or uh, no, when you think of Giannis, who would be the perfect player to play with Giannis? Right, Giannis is a big man. Um, he's a amazing defender. He rebounds. He is unguardable in the post. Can attack the rim. Right, and he, you know he can make a mid range or a three here and there. It's not his specialty at all. You know he's very inconsistent with his shooting and his free throw shooting, but everything else he's amazing at. Right, um, who would be the perfect player to pair him with? It would be a perimeter guy who can actually shoot the lights out. I would say Steph Curry. Steph Curry would be the perfect person to pair with Giannis. Second would be Damian Lillard. Because when you think of Steph Curry, the best shooter in the world, the best point guard in the game, Damian Lillard is second, right? I know some people argue, of course, like, Yoke, I mean, not Yoke, it's um, Luka Doncic is probably the second best point guard in the world. But Damian Lillard is right there. Damian Lillard, I think, is a top three point guard. You know, some will argue top five, depending on where you want to put, like, Kyrie Irving, um, John Morant, you know, um, and a bunch of other guys. But Jamal Murray, for example. But... I, Damon Lillard, at worst, is the, the top five point guard in his league. I think he's easily top three, and it's disrespectful to have him, you know, lower than uh, number three. But that's a conversation for another day. When you look at that combination, th- that is like literally the perfect duo. 
the perfect duo. I think right away, that's probably the best duo in the NBA. You know, you can debate Tatum and Jalen Brown. And this is a Celtics fan talking. You know, uh, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, right? You know, and you could put Bradley Beal in the mix. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, right? The list goes on and on and on. You know, James Harden and Embiid. But you look at the, what those those two, Giannis and Dame, are in their play styles, and they're literally perfect. Literally perfect for each other. Giannis, you know, he, you, you attack the rim, right? We know how Giannis has that quick first step. And once he gets the rebound and he gets down the floor, he's on, he's unguardable. But if you choose to play help when Giannis is attacking, sure, all right, I'll just kick it out to Chris Middleton and Damian Lord, cast three. Like, and it's, and here's another thing. At the end of games, the, you know, Giannis doesn't have to worry about, you know, um, shooting the last shot anymore. He can just sit in the paint and rebound. That would be, you have Chris Middleton and Damian Lord that will take the last shot. And we all know Dame's going to be the close on that team. Dame's arguably the best closer in the league. And, you know, and imagine this is this is insane. Thing. The pick and roll with Dame and Giannis is going to be nearly unstoppable. You choose to double Giannis on a pick and roll, all right, pass it right back to Dame, open for three or a mid-range jumper. You try to play help on Dame on the pick and roll, right, pass to Giannis, dunk in your face in the paint. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be unfair for some teams. But it's going to be so much fun from a basketball standpoint. You know, you you know, if, if you're not going to get Steph Curry and Giannis together, Damian Lord and Giannis are the next best thing. All right. And what 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 does this mean for them in the East? Sure, they lost Drew Holiday, which stinks. But, of course, they had to give up, you know, um, they had to give up a good player, um, a couple good players to get Dave. You know, he's not your... You're basically trading in one of the best defensive players in the league. Some may say the best defender play, defender in the league. I think he's it's him or Marcus Smart, in my opinion. But you're giving up, um, you know, defense for shooting, right? For shooting and scoring. You know, Dame's not, we all know Dame's not known for his defense. He's known for his shooting, his playmaking, um, and his scoring, right? And how much he spaces the floor. Uh, and it's gonna be it's gonna be super fun to watch. I'm I'm excited for it. You know, it's gonna be weird seeing Dame in that those green Bucks uniforms. I wish I got to see him in Celtics green, but you know, um, and I think you know, like, where does this put him in in terms of the Eastern Conference? Of course, most people are gonna say they're the favorites automatically coming out of the East. There, well, there's a lot of people that I've already checked like DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, they're already now the favorites to win the title. Before, it was like the Celtics and the Nuggets, right, with the Suns and the Lakers close there and the Warriors. But now, you know, the Bucks have jumped right up. They're now the number one odds to win the title. No no surprise there. But, you know, um, you know, I think that's fair. I My biggest concern with the Bucks would be what will be the status of Chris Middleton. You know, because you did have to give up a good amount of depth to get Dame, right? But, you know, as long as everyone stays healthy, I, I think the Bucks will be fine. But, you know, Chris Middleton, you, we, we know he struggled a lot with health issues these last couple of years. Um, and the Bucks can still win. I think the Bucks would be fine if Chris Middleton even missed his time. But um, you're assuming, you know, the Bucks are going to win the title if they have all three of those guys. It's going to be a lot tougher if it's just Dame and Giannis. Um, so I think a lot of it focuses on Chris Middleton. Uh, and of course, remember they do, they do have a new coach. It's good. You know, they, it's coach buds, not there anymore. It's a new coach. So it's going to take some time for them to get used to playing each other, to get the chemistry, right? Of course, along with, you know, whatever changes with the offense, with the new coaching staff. Um, but you know, I definitely think. Um, it, it was already finals or bust for Giannis just because Giannis has won a title already and Milwaukee's in the conversation every single year. Like, that's the go. But, you know, it's definitely, you know, championship or bust now. Damian Lillard is there to win a championship. Giannis wants to win another championship. It's that simple. They get to the conference finals and lose to the Celtics. That's fine. You know, it's going to be disappointing for them, you know, when that happens. But, um... 
the goal is for them to get to the finals and win it. That's why you make this deal. You make this deal to keep Giannis happy. And, you know, you make this deal to bring in one of the best shooters of all time, one of the best point guards in the league, one of the best players in the league, uh, period. And you make this deal um, to stretch your window of winning a championship at least by another three, four years. I think that's the window. You have three, four great years with Dame, you know, and see if you guys get bring another championship to Milwaukee. I love the move, and, you know, I, I think it's really it's them and the Celtics in the Easter Conference. Speaking of the Celtics, let's talk about them. Let's talk about them. So, you know, I am a Boston Celtics fan, and I will not lie, when I got the notification today that Dave was going to, um, that Dave was going to Milwaukee, at first I was like, what the, what the fuck? That was that was my first like. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, not because I don't like Dame. I love Dame. I wanted Dame to come to the Celtics. I was willing to part ways with Jalen Brown, who I also love. But I was like, I'm willing to get rid of Jalen Brown if and pairing Dame with Tatum. Um, I wanted Dame to go to the Celtics more than almost anything. So when I saw that Dame was going to Milwaukee, um, it. It definitely concerned me. It it definitely was like, uh, like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm good to you. Um, because if Damon went to Miami, I was like, okay, but I still think the Celtics can beat Miami in a seven game series, and I, and I still think the Celtics can beat the Bucks. But I'm I'm way more um nervous. I'm way more uh, fearful of Damon Giannis on the Bucks than if Dame was in Miami. Especially because Miami lost so much depth in the offseason. And if Miami had uh, gotten a Dame, they would have to give up so much more. And Tyler Hero and you know all these other guys, they would have to trade. So, um, that's, that was my perspective from like a Celtics fan. Uh, and definitely, you know, of course, probably that first game, that first Buck celtics game, I'm going to try to be there at the Garden. That, those games are going to be fun. You know, seeing Dame live at the Garden, uh, you know, two, three times a year, plus probably in the playoffs. But my th- uh, from a Celtics fan, I think most people before this trade was made had the Celtics as the favorites in the East, and clearly, you know, that's going to change. Most people are going to pick the Bucks, but I still think the Celtics are right there with the Bucks. I'm not going to say either team is better. I think we're going to have to wait till we get to the regular season. Uh, and we start playing real basketball here to see, you know, really how good these teams are. But, you know, the Celtics, like, are just as good. You know, Tatum and Brown, who are now more experienced now in their primes, all right, are only going to get better, right? Of course, you lost Marcus Smart, but you got Christos Porzingis, a 7-3 big man. Um, and I, You know, I think that's going to be huge in terms of stretching the floor if you have to play the Bucks. Because say you have you know you have Giannis on Prozingas, Giannis has to guard Prozingas at the line. You don't you you can't have this Giannis hugging the paint, right? But you still have Robert Williams if you need that rebounding, that shot blocking. You know you also have Horford who can also stretch the floor. You have Brogdon, you have Derek White, right? You have Hauser who I think is gonna have an increased role. And I did get the notification as I'm recording this: the Celtics are. Are gonna try to pursue Drew Holiday. If the Celtics are able to get Drew Holiday, that would be huge. That would, that would be, uh, you know, I would I would love Drew Holiday here. You know, he would be the perfect, and I mean the perfect replacement after losing Marcus Smart. Remember, people were debating Marcus Smart or Drew Holiday. This is a legit debate. Who's the better defender? Of course, Drew Holiday's a little bit older than Smart, but Smart's like a savvy veteran. There would be no better way to replace Drew uh, or to replace Marcus Smart than with Drew Holiday. I don't know what Drew's uh, contract is. I don't know what um, you would have to give up because I, you know, of course, you know when you're you're paying, you know, Jalen Brown as much as he's going to be getting with his new three hundred million deal, and then you know we know Tatum's going to be up for extension at the end of the season. Right, and he's gonna get his supermax deal. You gotta start thinking about all right, how much, uh, how much is Drew Holiday gonna cost? 
you know, based from a contract's perspective. You know, do do you have to trade either Brogdon or Derek White to get Holiday? Or is it simple like maybe you give Payton Pritchard and another player, um, uh, and, you know, maybe a pick or two? Because uh, we know the Celtics do have picks. You know, is that what you do to uh, get the deal done? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I hope next time I do record a video that Drew Holiday is a member of the Celtics. You know, that would make my cousin so mad because he's a Knicks fan, but Drew Holiday's his favorite player and he hates the Celtics. That bo- it's that you know, that Boston New York rivalry. He texted us earlier today that if Drew Holiday, you know, comes to the Celtics, he doesn't know what he's gonna do with himself. Because there's no way in hell he would ever reap root for the Celtics. Um but even if we don't get Drew, I'm happy with our team. We get Drew, oh I don't care, we're beating the Bucks. The Bucks giving us Drew Holiday basically. Right, Drew Holiday leaving the Bucks and becoming the Celtics, who are our biggest threat in the East. Oh yeah, we we're you give us Drew Holiday. I don't care who we're giving up. We're we're taking down Milwaukee if everybody's healthy. So, from a Celtics perspective, yes, yeah, sure. There's gonna be more people that don't see them now as the favorite coming out of the East because so many people are naturally gonna just pick the Bucks because of Dame, but. I think you're right there, if not better than the Bucks, still in a seven-game series. My expectation is if both teams stay healthy, we're going to get a Celtics versus Bucks Easter Conference Final, and that will go six, seven games. That's the expectation. Simple as that. You know, so if I'm a Celtics fan, yeah, am I a little bit worried about Dame? Of course, you know, going to your rival. But I still think the Celtics... With the roster they have, even though they lost Marcus Smart, you got Prozingas, you know, a 7 3 uh, center. If Prozingas can stay healthy, right? And I still think you have enough to still be, you know, uh, compete with the Bucks in the East. A lot of this is going to depend on if both teams can stay healthy. And I still think the Celtics have better depth than the Bucks. The Bucks may have, you know, the talent, the all star talent, but I think the Celtics have the, the, better overall roster top to bottom. I think that's what puts them ahead. But it'll be interesting. So Celtics fans, I wouldn't worry. Sixers, let's go on to the Sixers. So how do the Sixers feel about this trade? Not good. Not good at all. You know, of course, there was talk about Dame going to the Sixers early on. But, you know, the biggest thing was that the Sixers are not under any circumstances. They were not going to deal away Tyron Maxley. Um, who the Sixers think is a future All Star? I think Maxi is a future All Star. The guy is um a, a amazing player to watch, you know, and he's only gonna get better uh with age. Um, but that was the big thing. The Sixers were not gonna give up Maxi, which was gonna be the key piece in a trade. I know there was rumors maybe they trade Harden, right? But you know, that's the reason why Philly was not going to get Dame. They were, there was just no way they were going to give up Maxley, which Portland was, you know, dead set on. If I'm Philly, I don't feel good about this at all. You know, we already know the, the Sixers kryptonite is they can't get out of the second round. You know, they can't. They haven't been able to beat Boston. They haven't been able to beat Miami. They haven't been able to beat um, Milwaukee the last couple of years, right? So, if I'm Milwaukee, I mean, if I'm Philly, I don't feel good about this. Uh, and with all, you know, at all. And with all the drama that happened this summer with James Harden, James Harden's coming into camp, and I, most of us believe that James Harden doesn't even want to be there, right? And, you know, Joel Embiid, who's just coming off an MVP season, you know, he's made it clear that, yes, as great as when the MVP was, he wants to win a championship, you know? And, but... It seems like every year there's something that's going on with Philly to keep that from happening. No matter if it's Ben Simmons, no matter if it's James Harden, right? No matter if it's injuries, you know, there's always something going on um, with Philly. Uh, So if I'm the Sixers, especially now, if I'm Embiid, Embiid has been vocal saying like, hey, you know, remember, there was an interview uh, Embiid had earlier after the season. He's like, hey. You know, I want to win a championship, no matter if that's in Philly or somewhere else. So Embiid's made it known, like, you know, like if I if we don't end up winning or you know or making strides towards that championship the next in the next season or two, like, I might have to look into my options of going somewhere else. 
I think is a legitimate option that the Sixers might trade Embiid, maybe not before the end of this season, but going to next. If they, you know, especially if the Sixers can't get past the Celtics and Milwaukee, who are clearly more favored than them. And of course, you know, you can't leave Miami out of the mix as either. Remember, only two teams can go to the conference finals um, in the East. So, if I'm the Sixers, I'm not feeling good. You know, Embiid, who's made it known that he wants, you know, the Philly to do whatever it can to help them win a championship. Embiid just saw Giannis, you know, his competition for MVP every year and his competition for best player in the world, right? He just saw Giannis casually go out and basically say, hey, Milwaukee, I want you to do this, 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 you know, prove to me that, um, you know, you the goal is still to win a championship, Right. How does Embiid feel seeing Giannis go do that? And then Milwaukee responds by giving Giannis what he wants uh, with a superstar um, point guard in Damian Lillard. And Embiid sees, and the Sixers haven't really done anything this offseason. And it looks like Embiid's going to have to play with an unhappy James Harden this year. I'm telling you, man. I think I think we're you know we're we're gonna, this is gonna be the year where we start to see the downfall of Joel Embiid in Philadelphia, and it's not even his fault, it really isn't. It's more on the organization than him. Even though and there has been some playoff games where Embiid hasn't shown up, but I still think all in all it's more about the organization um, failing him than him failing them. But trust the process, right? Trust the process. Now, I'm not feeling good about this. Um, if I'm in Philly, uh, right now, Miami, Miami, uh, how should Miami, I don't know if you guys saw, there was a very funny video of Jimmy Butler, um, earlier today, he posted something on Instagram live after, um, the news came out about Damian Lillard and he said, the NBA, you know, you didn't hear this from me. I heard this from a, a guy, but you need to look into Milwaukee for tampering. You know, I I think he was more Jimmy Butler just joking. You know, of course, Jimmy Butler has to be disappointed that, you know, Miami's not getting Dame. Um, but I, I don't I don't I don't feel bad for Miami at all. First off, I'm a Celtics fan and, you know, I don't hate Miami as a franchise. But they they've beaten us twice, you know. Of course, we beat them in the conference finals two seasons ago. But they beat us twice in like the last four seasons to go to the finals. So I don't feel bad for Miami at all. Plus, Miami, everyone knew that's where Dame wanted, and a lot of us thought that's where Dame was going to end up. You know, uh, sooner rather than later. But it didn't. You know, he ended up going over the Milwaukee, who, like I said before kind of snuck under the radar in this whole thing. And um, the thing here with, um, you know, one thing is, you know, I got I got annoyed with Miami Heat fans. Of course, Miami Heat fans talked a lot of crap to uh, people like me when, you know, I thought the Celtics were going to, you know, win in seven after that game six uh, game winner uh, from Derek White. But, you know, we blew it in game seven in Boston. And then we had to hear it from Miami fans, stupid Miami fans, you know, uh, for a couple weeks. But then you guys got blown out by Denver in what was not even a good NBA Finals. It was a laughable NBA Finals. The games weren't even that competitive, you know? Um, but after we traded for Prozingis early in the offseason, right, um, all these Miami fans were like, but we're getting Dame. We're getting Dame. We're getting Dame. And I'll be honest with you guys. I thought you guys were getting Dame. You know, when all the reports kept saying, oh, Dame, you know, doesn't want to come to Boston or doesn't want to go to Philly or anything like that. I was like, no matter how long it takes, eventually the he's going to end up in Miami. He's going to end up there eventually, sooner rather than later. Right. He wants to go there. Pat Riley's going to get it done, you know, no matter how long it takes. And, you know, uh, ever since the NFL started, we kind of forgot about this whole Damian Lord thing. You know, things were quiet. But we kept getting notifications that, you know, things were, you know, slowly getting talked. You know, the teams were slowly still talking. But there was never really any real traction uh, coming down. 
And the big thing is that Miami was... I thought for the deal to get finalized, Miami was just going to have to get a third team involved. They were going to. They, you know, they just, they, because they didn't have enough that they could offer that Portland wanted. All right. The deal was what? Tyler Hero, um, Nervage, um, and a couple picks, right? But uh, it just wasn't enough for Portland. I, I thought, all right, you know, eventually they're going to get a third team involved here. Maybe it's the Clippers. Maybe it's Phoenix, right? It's, you know, it has somebody, they're going to get somebody involved and they're going to get this done. And then all this time happened and now it didn't. So I, of course, I don't feel bad for Miami Heat fans today. After all that crap, they, they talked all summer, you know, about them. Oh, we're getting Dave. We're getting Dave. They were already pre-celebrating, right? And look at, look at Miami. I think you're in worse shape. I, I do. I'm not saying Miami's not going to be able to compete. Because remember, you know, even though they went to the finals, they didn't have Tyler Hero. And Victor Oladipo, I believe, what? He tore his ACL, um, you know? So I expect Oladipo to be back. But you remember, they lost. Uh, all those players that they had helped them get to the, the finals, the teams that helped them beat Milwaukee, beat the Knicks, beat my Celtics, and beat the... Uh, or not beat, but uh, compete against the Nuggets in the finals, they lost Caleb Martin. They lost Max Drew. What Max Drew didn't he? I think he's in Cleveland now. I think Caleb Martin, if I'm right, is in Charlotte. They want to get paid, which you know, good for them. Go get your money, you know, because they weren't making anything with Miami because they were all but undrafted players. All those shooters that they had, you know, they lost. Remember, they lost Gabe Vincent. Vincent's on the Lakers now, so most of those players that helped Miami get to you know the finals are gone. And they thought, all right, Damon Lord, you know, is going to come and fix that. You know, uh, hey, we lose all these shooters. You know, we lose Tyler here and a couple more. But Dave's going to fix most of that. And now you don't. Now, you know, you've lost most of your death. And then you also lost, you know, you're not getting the player that you thought you were going to get. You know, you still have good players. Jimmy Butler, you know, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero still there. But you've lost most of that depth that you that you had before. You know, all those players that helped them get to the finals are not going to be there this season. They're on different teams. So, I would be very worried if I'm a Miami Heat fan right now. You, you're, not, you're not even a top three favorite in the conference. I don't even know if you're top four. You know, some would argue you could put Cleveland and uh, the Knicks ahead of Miami now based off roster construction. So, and, uh, you know, I don't feel bad. If you guys were serious about Dame, you would have gotten the deal done. You've had three months. This started at the end of June, early July. You know, all this time, you they let the talks quiet down, and then they started to re-engage. Because I don't think Miami ever took it seriously that there were other teams that were going to come in. I think that they thought that even if Dame... um or if another team like the Bucks or like Toronto offered a deal for uh, Dame, I think they always thought that, oh, at least Portland would come back to them, give them one uh, final chance to match the offer or give them something better. But no, they didn't. They decided to, you know, take the kickback and take it easy because they thought, oh, we're going to get Dame no matter what. We're going to get this done no matter if it's it, no matter if it's before training camp or in the middle of the season. We're going to get this done, and he's going to be on our team. So, But they didn't. And I think it's, I'm surprised because of how great of a exec Pat Riley is. The guy's a legend. But I don't feel bad for Miami today. I don't feel bad at all. You enjoy, I hope you enjoyed those conference finals appearances and those two finals appearances where you got no rings while you had it because you're not getting back there for the next couple years. I'm sorry, you're not. You've lost your depth. You didn't get Dame. You know, the Bucks and the Celtics both make up made upgrades and are clearly better than you, right? Bearing no injuries. And I would argue that there's three other teams that are better than Miami right now. I would argue Cleveland's better than you. I would argue the Knicks are better than you. And I would argue that the Sixers are better than you. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen until the games start playing because Miami was the eighth seed last year. And that, you know, they did make that imagine run. But I also would remind folks that they a lot of stuff went their way. 
Giannis was injured for half of the first round series. If Giannis isn't injured for that series, I think the Bucks probably still win it. Or the Bucks probably would have won it. Or would have won it. Right? You know, if Jason Tatum doesn't get injured in game se- in the in literally the first 36 of game seven, I think the Celtics win uh that. If things are healthy, I don't think Miami's gonna have that much luck. And I like Jimmy Butler, you know, but all those Miami Heat fans, you know, you guys are real silent today on Twitter. You know, I, I, I hope you enjoyed that playoff success while you had it because I don't think you're going to be having that the next couple of years. And I don't feel bad. You know, this is a business. Portland, you know, Miami, could, maybe they expected that if uh, a team got a better deal for Dame, right, that they were going to come to them with a final offer. That's not the way business works. Portland doesn't owe anything to Miami. You know, if you wanted to get this done, you would have treat you know uh, taken more action, and you would have been quicker to get a third team involved instead of just sitting back and chilling and relaxing. Because Woes treated that a deal really never matured, which is sad because you had three months to do it. But you know, that's on you. That's on you, Miami. So I hope they are okay and they live with that choice. Next up, uh, Phoenix. Phoenix was the third team in this trade. They were the ones that got this done. And credit to Phoenix. I see a lot of people wondering, oh, why would Phoenix be helping out a team that they might have to play in the finals? First off, Phoenix has to get to the finals. I think, you know, right now, if you ask me who has the better chance of winning the championship and getting out of their conference, I would say Milwaukee. I think in the Eastern Conference, it's going to come down to Milwaukee or Boston if both teams are healthy. In the Western Conference, I think you know Phoenix has a much tougher road. You have the Lakers who made a lot of upgrades in the offseason. You have, of course, Phoenix brought in Bradley Beal, but the Lakers have a lot more depth on their roster with the names they brought in. You still have Nuggets who are going to be the defending champions, and I still like the Warriors. I still think the Warriors are going to be there, and I still think the Warriors are going to probably still make one more move sometime during the season to improve their roster. I think the Warriors are mainly just missing a big man at this point. And then uh, you can't forget about, like, the Kings, for example, you know, and maybe the Pelicans if Zion can stay healthy for a full season. So, you know, I think Phoenix has a lot more to worry about. I think Phoenix should worry about getting to the finals before uh, worrying about, oh, we made uh, the team we might play in the finals better by training, you know, helping them get Damian Lillard. Phoenix, you need to focus on making your team better. Because the big issue with Phoenix was they had no depth. No depth. Even with the scoring trio of Bradley Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant, and as many points as those three are going to put up together, right, you had no depth absolutely on that roster. You know, you had a couple guys, what, was it Cameron Payne, DeAndre Ayton, you know, like two other players. They had zero depth. And it's insane to see how much Phoenix has changed over the last, since they lost that finals to Milwaukee a couple years ago. You know, they got rid of Chris Paul. They got rid of DeAndre Ayton today. They got rid of Mikel Bridges, you know, and Tyler Johnson and all those guys, you know, but. I think Phoenix is still, right now, after today, they put themselves in a much better chance to contend. I don't think they're the favorites coming out of the West. Uh, I I would say I would give a slight edge to Denver. But I, I think you know Phoenix really helped themselves out today with the depth that they added to their roster. Um, You look at it, right? Who did the Suns get? They got Nur- uh, Nurkic uh, from Portland. Very good big man. Um, they got Grayson Allen, you know, who is the NBA's version of um uh of Mac Jones, a very dirty player, but the guy can ball a little bit. They got Nasir Little and Keon Johnson. These are all guys that are gonna fit on their bench. Nurkins will probably start. But um You know, that's a that's a solid lineup. That's a solid lineup um for the uh for the Suns. Or a silent, you know. Uh, probably depending on how they want to do it. You know, Devin Booker or Bradley Beal will play the one, uh, one in the two. Maybe some nights they'll switch, right? Then you got KD at the three. You have Nurkic at the four, and I'm I'm missing somebody. Um, 
but but yeah and then you know uh or if you want i think cameron Payne's is still on that team if you really want you could have cameron Payne run the run or uh run the one uh beal won the two devin booker uh, you know he's a little bit shorter but maybe you could put him at the three you put KD at the four. You could put Nurkic uh, at the five. Nurkic might not be the kind of rim protector that DeAndre Ayton was, but he's still a valuable big man who's going to... Um, oh, I also forgot. The Suns have Jossa Corgi. So, yeah, you could still... You have Bradley Beal at the one, Booker at the two, or Corgi at the three, Durant at the four, um, Nurkic at, uh, at the five. So, yeah, depending on how you look at it, you know, I, I, I think the Suns really put themselves in good shape. This was not about the Suns helping the the what could be their future finals opponent get better. This is about the Suns doing what they had to do so they, they could compete in the Western Conference playoffs. Because you look at the Lakers, you look at the Nuggets, you look at the Warriors, those teams have depth. Right? They have depth, they have good, they have good players on their starting five and their bench. The Suns did not have that before today. You know, did the Suns now have the best bench in the West? No, not at all. You know, but I think this helps them compete a lot better. Because, you know, a lot of that, you know, this team is going to be based on how many points they score. Right? With the Suns, the Suns are going to rely down on any given night. Their three guys alone are going to outscore almost um, anybody else that they play. You know, and then when they have to go on the bench, probably at least one of them will stay in. Right, play with the second unit, and then they'll rotate, and that will probably be between Beal and Booker. You know, so I think I I, I loved what the Suns did today. Kudos to kudos to them, kudos to them. I think they really helped themselves, and I really do love the addition of Nerf, uh, of Nurkic for them. Um, quickly to the Blazers, to the Blazers. Um, like we, we said earlier, they got Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Kamara, and a bunch of pick swaps uh, in the 2029 uh, protected, uh, unprotected first-round pick. Uh, do I like what the Blazers got? I think they did okay. You know, I think there is one key here. It was announced like 15 minutes after the trade that the Trailblazers are not done. They're going to be playing the Trey Drew Holiday to a contender. Like I said, of course, you know, the Knicks are going to be involved. The, you know, my, you know Miami's going to want to get uh Hol- or try to get Holiday. You know, he would fit well on the Sixers. He would fit well on the Clippers, right? He would fit well on the Celtics. So I think Drew's going to go to one of these contenders and, you know, he'll be a great piece um to help them compete for a title. I think whatever they get in uh in uh in a trade for Drew Holiday will be key. That that's when we can really kind of judge the same. Cuz we know the Blazers are getting younger and they're, you know, they're building around these new guys, Scoot Henderson and uh and the and the club. And you know, Drew Holiday is great, you know, great guy. Um he does have some value. You know, you're not you're not gonna you don't trade Drew Holiday for nothing. It's probably gonna be a veteran player and probably maybe a you know second third or, you know, or a second or a second round pick somewhere around here. Uh, I think that's what Holiday's gonna go for, and then we can kind of really judge this trade because you do have DeAndre Ayton, right? DeAndre, if I'm being honest, kind of ran himself out of Phoenix. We all we all seen the clips of how he was um, in the huddle with Monty Williams, right? Uh, even though I know Monty's not there anymore. But, you know, how he was in the huddle with Monty Williams. Um, how he was. Let me search up. We saw how he was when I remember when uh, it was a season ago when he signed uh, when he was a free agent um, and he was a restricted free agent and I forget who he signed with, with. I don't know if it was with Detroit it was some team and then of course Phoenix matched the offer and then he was clearly unhappy about it when uh, 
you know, when he was asked about it, he did not want to go back to Phoenix, you know, and it kind of showed, you know, when he he was getting absolutely destroyed by Jokic in their second round series uh, in the playoffs last year, and it seemed like he just didn't care, you know. His effort was a problem. His attitude was a problem. And I'm not saying DeAndre is a bad guy, but clearly he was just not engaged with Phoenix, you know, the last year. Ever since they lost that finals, he was just, he just didn't look like he cared to be there anymore. I don't know if it was because of the organization or does he had problems with Monty Williams, but clearly he wasn't there. I felt like if DeAndre had shown more effort and more fight um, in that battle against Jokic and, you know, wasn't, you know, it sometimes looked like he was just looking for fights to pick fights with Monty Williams. I feel like if he tried a little bit more and was it they had that sour attitude, there's a good chance he probably still is with the the Suns today. I I really do think that. Of course, his contract is a very was a very fat contract, especially when you have Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant three max contracts on your books. You know, um, so they wanted to get off that. But, you know, I, I think he'll he'll fit in nicely with Portland. I don't think Portland will be a playoff team, but it'll, it'll maybe, I think it will be a good chance for him to get a fresh start. And it kind of remind folks, if he has a big season, uh, season over there, um, it will remind folks, like, hey, this is, I'm that good. And maybe, you know, maybe down the line it will open up an opportunity for him to go to another contender maybe in a season or two, right? But good for Fiends to get H and off the books. Um and get him to Portland. But I just looked up Drew Holiday's deal, right? And Drew's Drew signed a four year deal with uh a four year one hundred thirty four million deal dollar deal with Milwaukee after they won the, the finals. And how many years ago was I think was that was the twenty twenty one finals, I believe. They won because the last year was or two years ago was Golden State. Last year was um Denver. So but yeah, I believe it was twenty twenty one. Um, when the when Milwaukee won their title, um, he still has two years left on his deal. Um, and this year, wherever he goes, he'll be making thirty three million dollars, which is a good amount. So if he goes to Boston, Boston's probably have to gonna have to give up a couple players, um, just to make it work because we all know Jalen Brown and Tatum's deals are, are gonna take effect. So it's something it's something to play around with. Thirty-three million is a lot of money. It's a good top. It's a good chunk of change. Um, and then he does have a player option, so he has a player option. So if he chooses to, wherever he goes, he can opt out at the end of the season, become a free agent, or he can uh, opt into his deal for next season, um, and then become a, a free agent after twenty twenty-five. So that is uh, important stuff to note. Um, but yeah, wherever Drew goes, I think you're trading Drew for at least one, you know, one veteran player and probably a pick, you know, probably a second round pick, maybe two veteran players, you know, just to make it work with the contract. But still, wherever Drew goes, he's going to be a major asset for, for that team. Um, like I said, selfishly, I hope it's the Celtics. I think the Celtics, you know, if you give up Peyton Pritchard and, you know, maybe another guy potentially, and then uh, a couple pick, a pick or two, or you know, maybe like one or two picks. I think that would be perfect. It's all gonna, it would all depend also on what's, you know, how that affects the Celtics books. But either way, I think it's a deal you have to do for your Boston. Have to do. Just let Milwaukee know we're not playing. We don't care that you got Dame. We're coming for your throats. Um, but that's my thoughts on that. Uh, we'll see where Drew goes. But I think that's also that could also be a very sneaky, sneaky important move. Um, when you know it comes to the rest of the NBA now that Dame is in Milwaukee. But uh, my final thoughts, really, um, I I think th- th- this is the deal of the year. Uh, I th- I I I don't think it necessarily elevates Milwaukee to the title favorites. I think it just. It makes it clear that now the Eastern Conference is going to come down to the Celtics and the Bucks. You know, I, I don't know which team is better um, because they're constructed both completely differently. But the Celtics have a lot of depth. Um, Milwaukee has the stars. Uh, and I think it's going to be really, really fun. I, I'm happy for Dame that he's going to be contending with a title 
a legitimate title contender for the next three, four years. And this is going to be the best stage that we get to see Dame on. You know, because Dame deserves to be on in those bright lights. He deserves to be on in those those conference uh, championship games um, or those conference final runs or those conference final uh, uh, runs with, you know, with uh, Mike Breen yelling, bang, what a shot from Lillard or in the NBA finals. Dame deserves that spotlight. I, I think it uh, it took him way too long to get there because it took him way too long to finally get out of that stubborn mindset that he had in uh, Phoenix. I'm not Phoenix, in Portland. But I'm happy for him. And I, I, I've already said it earlier. I, I expect him in Milwaukee, him and Giannis, to win a championship here sometime in the next three, four seasons. In a perfect world, and this is just my, my selfishness and my, my fandom coming out, in a perfect world, the Celtics win the NBA Finals this year in 2024, and then Dame and the Bucks can win it in 2025. Because I want to see Dame get his ring. Trust me, I do. I don't hate Giannis. I don't hate the Bucks, but I want to see Dame get his ring. But not before the Celtics. Celtics come first, baby. So I would love to see Tatum and company finally get the job done. Finally, you know they've been knocking on the door for you know five years now. Um, I would love to see them get the thing done. And then maybe in a year after that, that's when Dame uh, finally gets that ring. But we'll see. We'll see. But it gets me more excited than ever for the NBA season. That's getting ready to rock and roll here in just a couple uh, just a couple days. Uh, we got media week or media day starting next week and then training camp. And we're only about a month away from NBA basketball. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. But. Let me know what you guys are excited about. What's your thoughts on the Damian Lillard trade? Does this make the Bucks the uh, favorites out in the East? Or is there another team um, that you guys are looking for? Who do you guys have in the finals next year? Who do you guys have winning it all? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel by hitting the bell. my name is Swing TV. So you guys are notified every time I post a new video. I'm going to get out of here. Stay safe and healthy, y'all. Peace.